Let me start with the moving chairs, a changing of the guard, if you would, at the White House. When are we going to begin to see bodies out, bodies in? I put this question right before the uh, Christmas break uh, to a, a senior source who works frequently with the White House, who tells me essentially that on the issue of foreign policy, particularly with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, the timing of his exit likely is going to have to do with a lot of other developments that we're seeing in the news, especially with the developments of Iran and, of course, North Korea. So as this per moves forward with the Winter Games expected to start in the next couple of weeks as well, really the geopolitical global events impacting these departures. Yeah. I, it'll be interesting to see unpredictable, always predictable, as Jared Bernstein, former advisor to Vice President Biden, writing smart economics here in the Washington uh, Post. He just joined us recently on Bloomberg Surveillance. If wages do accelerate, trickle downers will go nuts, but they'll need to show the gains linked to faster investment, faster productivity growth, which trickles down to wages. They'll also need to explain why the budget deficit is up, up. Ron Temple just mentioned that, because they assured us the growth-inducing tax cut would pay for itself. That's a very different than full employment boosting workers' bargaining clout. Does anybody at the White House, Kevin, believe in trickle-down economics? Well, they all do, and they're banking on it because they feel that this is going to help uh, give them the leverage that they need, Tom, to get into the 2018 midterms, and we're just a couple of months away from them. But Jared Bernstein knows this, knows this that this is what the White House is banking on and betting on uh, for 2018, is that this tax plan is going to, even though it doesn't take effect until next calendar year, is still going to boost the economy uh, to help them make the case in the midterms that they're turning it around. I mean, there's so much to do. Good morning, Kevin, Good and morning. Happy New Year to you. There's happy so much New to Year. do, you know, when it comes to Congress. Um, what is the one thing that you'll be watching out for? I mean, I guess it's a government shutdown, right? I'm looking at, the, everyone's talking about the government shutdown. They got to pass that partial government funding bill by January 19th, just a couple of weeks. Uh, and of course, infrastructure, we all want the details on that infrastructure plan. Will the House Freedom Caucus support that infrastructure plan? And will President Trump make a deal with Democrats on that? Should he lose Republican support? But Francine, you know what I'm really excited about and I really can't wait to cover is financial services deregulatory policy. That is where wow. I think is going to be the <laughs> sleeper issue here. Seriously, because uh, the Senate Banking Committee is moving ahead on this and the dynamics of this and whether or not they're able to get some centrist democratic appeal on the issue of community banking regulatory relief, that's going to be interesting. And I think we haven't seen the deregs on the financial front uh, and whether or not they move along and uh, Banking Committee Chairman Mike Crapo can get Harry Reid on board. We'll have to wait. I'm sorry, Leader McConnell on board. We'll have to wait and see.